Hello, people of the internet. Uh, my name is Rebecca Valera, and I'm a former teacher turned realtor living here in the Dallas area. And today I am here with my good friend, Katie Day. What's going on? <laughs> So I'm out of the Dallas market and Katie is, I'll let you, you talk a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So I am in the great city of Houston, Texas. Um, and yeah, I've been in real estate for, it feels like forever. I've been in real estate for, I guess, five years now. Um, and yeah, then lived in Houston now for almost 10 years. So uh, I'm excited to kind of dig in today. Thanks for having me on uh, Houston and Dallas and, you know, how great Houston is. <laughs> All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk a little bit about is um, the, oh, why did I have dog market on? There we go. Sorry about that. Those are kind of a, this is live guys. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> bear with us. Bear with us. Exactly. Um, so the first thing that we're going to really dive in on are going to be the certain parts of town. So we're going to talk a little bit about the areas because I feel like that um, that is a big thing when people move to either Dallas or Houston, they're trying to figure out where they're going to be, where they're going to live. And depending on what their specific needs are, what their budget is, it's going to determine what part of parts of town they're going to live in. So we're going to kind of start there um, and I'll let Katie uh, take it away. Yeah. So as far as different areas of town, um, Houston, similar to Dallas has like a lot of highways, right? So, um, you know, Houston's highways, you've got like downtown, which is inside of the center core of the city. And then we've got the 610 loop, We've got Beltway 8 and then we've got 99. So those are kind of the three major highways um, in the Houston area. Um, and um, that is basically going to be, you know, kind of the, the different areas that you would kind of look at as you're looking at Houston. So there's a ton of different suburbs, both, you know, north, south, east, west. Um, but, you know, as you get further and further out, that'll be kind of the different areas of town. Um, I know Rebecca, uh, Dallas is a little similar as far as having, you know, kind of the different highways and then kind of suburbs, you know, in um, the different directions, right? Like as yeah. far as larger, I, I wouldn't even call them neighborhoods. They're really towns or cities, right? Like outside of Houston, we've got Katy, we've got Sugarland, we've got the mm -hmm. Woodlands and Spring and those, I mean, I don't think they're as big as like Fort Worth is, but you know, they're, right. they're cities in, in itself. Right. And I, I would say that, when you look at Dallas, a lot of people have this misconception that, oh, Dallas, you know, this little town, Dallas is like 1.3 million and, you know, population wise. And that's as of like a couple of years ago. So I'm sure it's grown a little bit since then. And I know Houston is like population wise, what you're, are you close to like 3 million? I know you're yeah, like, so I think it's, I think it's like, yeah, it's, it's like two and a half ish, but that was okay. as of like 2018. So yeah. like, I know that obviously we like just had a census and it's, I don't know if it's still yeah. going, but like the census just happened. So like that number should, should definitely increase. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, um, we are the fourth largest city in America, you know? So, wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. That That's, um, and then, yeah, like you said, as far as Dallas goes, there's like Dallas County as a whole engulfs a lot of, I mean, in the county, like if we're looking at the county, that's like 2.6 million people. So you almost, almost double in size when you go look at the county. But Dallas as a whole, um, depending on like if you're a single person, you might want to settle closer to downtown and yep. be, you know, to where you're in more of a townhome or condo type setting. Um, and those are a little bit trendier areas to be in is there's a lot of them closer to downtown or just north of downtown in Addison. A lot of, you know, 20 somethings and 30 somethings really um, love that particular area because of the vibe, because of what's there and around it. And then, like you said, the further you go out, you know, you have cities like um I used to live in Garland. So that's a, just a little suburb outside of just outside of it's in still in Dallas County, but it's just outside of Dallas. Richardson Plano is exploding. Um, and I would say that Plano and downtown are two of the biggest areas for jobs uh, when it comes to moving to Dallas or to mm -hmm. the Dallas area, because 
we've seen a lot of growth in Plano and even in Frisco too, because Frisco is another one that's right around there. McKinney is a little bit further north than that. Um, you've got the other side of town closer to the west side of Dallas and Fort Worth, closer, you have Coppell. We have the international airport um, that's kind of like halfway in between Dallas and Fort Worth. And then um, Fort Worth is its own like beast, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a, it's huge, just like Dallas is. And it has it has the downtown section and then it kind of goes out from there but i would say that fort worth has more of a country vibe to it than dallas dallas has more of that hip you know inner city kind of vibe to it and then yeah. fort worth you have the stockyards which yeah are there. yeah so there's a lot of agricultural um popular venues over there a lot of two-stepping goes on over there if you if you like to uh the you know the uh can't think of the name of that big dance hall, but that we've got several in Fort Worth. There's some in Dallas too, but I would say they're more popular on that side of town. But I mean, not to say that everybody in Fort Worth is a hick because that is not the case. There well, you've are got TCU out there too. So, yeah, you know, you've TCU got a lot of over there. Um, we've got uh, the University of um, Dallas, which is uh, in the heart of Dallas, along with SMU. Um, they are closer to in the downtown area and then closer to Denton, which is kind of north in between Dallas and Fort Worth. You've got Texas Women's University and University of North Texas, both there. And those are some of the major universities around. What about uh, Houston? Tell us a little, little bit about. Um, how about we add you to the stream? <laughs> Um, so as far as schools go um, in Houston, um, you know, we've got in town, really the, the majority of schools. So we've got University of Houston, University of Houston downtown. Um, we have um, Texas Southern University. We have Rice um, and we have St. Thomas. So all of those are in basically like Houston proper city of Houston. Um, and then as you go further out, we've got like Sam Houston State and Prairie View and other schools, but those I wouldn't necessarily like, they're not, they don't have a Houston address, right? So they're just close by like, you know, I mean, A&M, you know, Texas A&M is 90 minutes away. So it's, it's close, but you know, we definitely don't claim it as, as, as part of Houston. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then as, as kind of as far as the suburbs go, um, you know, I named a few earlier, but like, as you go South, you have Pearland, you have stuff like that. Um, you know, going out west, you've Katy and Sugarland up north, uh, Cypress, Sugar, uh, Cypress, the Woodland Spring. Um, so, you know, kind of as you said with with Fort Worth, they're all kind of starting to become like their own little cities. So yeah. it's it's definitely interesting to see. Um, so yeah, cool. So and then the other thing about schools, if you have a family, that's another popular question that people mm -hmm. when they move to the area, they're like. What are the schools like? Um, you know, I'm nervous. I'm about to have a kindergartner, and you know, kindergarten, and I don't know anything. And uh, but I mean, Texas as a whole ranks. We're kind of in the middle of the pack when it comes to the nation. So we're like 20 something, I believe, uh, when I looked at a couple of the stats and some of the data. Um, and we'll have links to the information about the schools when we talk about it in the description below, so you guys can check all of that out. But um, I would say that. Uh, as far as Dallas goes, if you look at niche.com, um, Dallas ISD as a whole is going to have a B minus rating. So it's not going to be, it's not the greatest as far as schools like Dallas ISD, but I will say that there are some very popular um, school districts within Dallas ISD that have very high rankings. So um, like your Woodrow Wilson um uh, school that has the performing arts there. That's a niche there. And then there's a couple other ones uh, in Dallas that are, you know, focusing more on engineering, that type of thing. Um, but as a whole, I would say that compared to Houston, Dallas area schools are going to be ranked in the top 20, like hands down. I, I looked at niche.com. Carroll ISD is um, in the Dallas area. Highland Park is in the heart of downtown. Lovejoy ISD is closer to, to me in the, the Lucas um, Murphy area. Um, Coppell ISD uh, ranked number seven. Grapevine Colleyville ranked number eight. Allen ISD ranked number nine. Plano number 12. Argyle, Prosper, Sunnyvale, they're all within the, the first like top 20 ISDs in the entire state. So what do you have to say about 
the schools in uh, Houston as far as K through. Um, are you sure you weren't just looking at like the rankings for Dallas or were you looking for Texas as a whole? And, you know, that's that's just I'm curious on that um, as far as, you know, your sources and your lists here. But um, as far as the schools go, um, niche.com and greatschools.org are both really good, um, really good resources to be able to see like what how kind of how the schools rank. Um, because I think even in, and I don't know if it's this way in Dallas, but it's definitely this way in Houston, even in some of the ISDs, the independent school districts, um, some schools rank higher or lower than others, right? So um, in Houston ISD, it's probably a little bit lower of a school uh, yeah. ranking as a whole, right? But then there's schools in there that are like top notch, right? So it's like right. people will move to a specific school district or to a specific, um, like specific school in the district because like that's a highly ranked school or they want to be in a certain area because of that. Yeah. Um, what's kind of cool is on HAR.com, which is our oh. um, app for okay. um, for buyers and renters that are looking in the Houston area. They can actually see school ratings in there. So it'll tell you if they're good, it'll tell you if they're excellent. Mm -hmm. And then they'll also dig into like the Texas, um, uh, st was it star ratings? Yeah, the star as test. Far as, yeah. yeah, as far as the yeah. testing ratings. Yeah, Which I don't know. I, I, I know my teacher friends and also, you know, uh, friends that have children kind of feel uh, I, I don't know what the best word to use is that's that's appropriate for this live stream, but they don't like the standardized testing as right. a whole, you know, it's like mm -hmm. not necessarily the best indicator of a school. But anyway, so, um, you know, some of the higher ranked school districts, um, you know, in in the Houston area would definitely be the Katy ISD. Um, the um, Conroe ISD has some really good schools, SciFair ISD, um, Fort Bend has some as well. But again, there are kind of hit or miss schools within those districts. So that's where going to greatschools.org and putting in the addresses and seeing like, hey, is this a seven or a 10? Is this a four or an eight? You know, kind of where they rank is helpful to then say, okay, these are the schools that I want to be in and build from there. So um, you know, whenever I have people that are moving in from out of state or moving in, you know, from a different area, say even Dallas, you know, what, what I'll normally do is say, okay, what area of town do you want to be in or where's your job and what, what kind of commute do you want? And then in that area, we can then see which schools rank the best, um, for, you know, I, either what you're looking for, right. Cause there's some that are like dual immersion or have specific programs and then like which ones have higher rankings than others. Cause, um, it's difficult to just go off of a specific school district here. Like it, it's, it's not really, and I don't know if that's the way it is up there, but. I would say yes and no. I would say the school district is more of an indicator here. Um, unless you are looking in the heart of Dallas where you have more of your niche um, schools because, yeah. and, and Garland ISD is kind of the same way too. I used to teach in Garland. And I, I understand uh, being a former teacher that, yeah, you can't just look at the school ratings and have that be like the only thing that you look at, which is why yeah. Katie and I are trying to give you guys multiple resources like greatschools.org, niche.com. She's got one for another website for Houston. And then I know the TEA also has their own website. The TEA stands for Texas Education Agency, and they have oodles of information um, about the school's in the areas that you're trying to look for. Now I want to kind of pull up the, uh, the niche.com uh, window really quick. I think it was this one right here. So this is what I was looking at Katie uh, when I was looking at the, <laughs> Cite your the sources. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's dripping Springs, but that's, that's no, nowhere close to up. So I was looking for, Oh goodness. I think I had to go back. Here we go, 21, this is where I was at, sorry. All right, so this is best, so as a district. So we've got Eanes, which that's close to Austin. We don't care about Austin right now. Um, yeah, okay, keep so scrolling, keep scrolling. <laughs> yeah, keep scrolling. All right, so number two is Carroll Independent School District, and that's in Southlake, which is right in between Dallas and Fort Worth. Um, number three is in Mercedes. I'm not sure where that one is. It may be closer to you or maybe to San Antonio, but that's not nowhere near me. Highland Park's number four, and that's in the heart of Dallas. Lovejoy is in, uh, it's, it says Allen, but it's, it's a mixture of Allen, Lucas, McKinney. Like it has a meld of different cities that um, are zoned to that one. Mm -hmm. um, Capel ISD, another top school district, um, which is, 
pretty much it's 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 on the west side of Dallas, west northwest side of Dallas, closer to the airport. That's why a lot of people like Coppell and that city in general. And then Frisco, people always talk about Frisco schools, and they're ranked number seven for a reason. And then Grapevine Colleyville is also kind of that in an in between city between Dallas and uh, Fort Worth. Allen ISD is just to my south, and they're ranked number nine. So I'm just kind of looking at the friends. Friends would, that's us. That's you. Okay. <laughs> number right. ten. There's, there's Houston, number 10. But, at, but like you were saying, um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Let me get back to. So as you were kind of saying with the, in Houston, it's different. So that makes a whole lot of sense that we can't just write off a district. We have to look at the schools within the district as well to see what their rankings are. Um, so that's a, that's a very valid point. I'll, I'll give you kudos for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's tough too, because that's like similar to what kind of we just did, you know, someone will Google it and see mm -hmm. that like Friendswood has a good school district and they're like, well, this is where I want to live, but yeah. I want to be near these things and near my job and near, you know, all this. So it's, I think, especially for families moving to a new city, it's definitely a balancing act of like, you know, being close to work or close to transportation and then like the schools as well. So um, yeah, it's definitely um, interesting to try to balance all of that. Yeah, for sure. So let's, let's jump into the next most popular topic that people really want to know about, and that is affordability. So in the housing, housing is usually the biggest component of anyone's budget when they're, when you're moving to a specific area. Um, and do you want me to start Katie? Or are you going to start for this for housing? Um, as far as affordability, I mean, I'm, I can definitely talk a little bit about that kind of what's going on in the market yeah. now. Um, you know, I think that, um, affordability is definitely something that has been, um, being compressed a little bit as far as how much affordable housing is out there. Um, you know, prices, especially this year, we've seen, um, you know, very high buyer demand in the market. So prices have, you know, kind of also gone up, you know, just general supply and demand. Um, so, you know, one thing that that I actually just ran is that we saw that we have um, about 30 to 35% less inventory now in the market than we did um, at this time last year. So normally we have a lot more inventory on the market. So right now what we're seeing in Houston is the median sales price is up to like 265, which is up about 8.3% over last year. Um, so, you know, we're kind of continuing to see um, prices increase, which is making it very difficult. And I'm sure it's the same in Dallas for like first time home buyers, anyone looking under 250. And if you're looking under 200, it's it's tough, tough out there for a buyer. Um, so it's definitely something that when we're working with buyers, like if they're like, hey, we want to think about it or, you know, we're going to sleep on it. You're like, you, there's no time to there's sleep. No you know, time. you've got to like put the offer in now, <laughs> now. you know, and, and see what happens. Um Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, I think that's something that we're kind of seeing mm -hmm. nationwide right now. Um, yes. And even with new construction as well, we've seen builders start to limit the amount of homes that they're selling, which normally it's like, it's a kind of a counterintuitive yeah. thing. It's like, normally it's like, hey, let's sell, sell, sell. They don't have enough, you know, manpower and yep. materials yep. and, you know, things to build more homes. So like we're selling two this month and four next month. And like, yes. we're like, okay, so can we get on the waiting list? And it's like, no, you can't. But like, on the first, whoever the first four people come and bring us a $5,000 deposit, they get the house. So I'm like, right. It's very interesting. Um, it's been, it's been a weird, a weird year in real estate for sure. What would you say is your median price there in Houston? Um, and I know it's, it's going to, that's a little subjective too, because of what's going on in the housing, housing market right now. But if, if someone were to, you know, what, what, what is the, we'll just start with median median price and then you can we well we already know that it could go up obviously from there just because of what, what we're experiencing but yeah i mean it always obviously varies depending on what's selling right so as, as mm -hmm. there's fewer homes that are that are in that lower price point that are available so people can't buy them obviously it's going to continue to you know kind of vary um normally it's around 250 last month it was 265 was the median okay. sales price okay um so yeah, I mean, it's it normally hovers anywhere between like 240, 250, 260 ish. Um, but again, last month it was 265. Wow. Yeah. And I would say so here it's a little bit similar as well. So as of, let's see, 
So for the city of Dallas, the median price was about 251. And that was as of September 2020. Yeah. And in the market ebbs and flows. So like summer is like the median price is probably a little bit higher because there's such an influx. But we still haven't seen a slowdown. I don't I don't know if you've seen a slowdown. We haven't really slowed down since post -co post, you know, that that other that that V word came into uh came into play. I don't want to say that word. Um, so post uh, post V, um, we were um, we it just kind of it was like a rubber band. And this is what a lot of people how they say it. when when we were in that slump of the housing market, it was like a rubber band that was stretching. And then as soon as it was let go, it was like, do, 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 do. I mean, I had a listing and it was, you know, multiple offers and here and multiple offers there. Now, has has that slowed down a little bit here in Dallas? Yes, it has. Um, and, it, and if you are in a multiple offer situation, it's not going to be like tens of twenties of thousand dollars over the more over, you know, the price as a, you know, in Austin, I'm sure they're seeing a lot of that because Austin is just like the hot spot here in Texas. But, it, but as far as Dallas goes, if you offered maybe like $5,000 over, you know, what you're asking for, you could get it. And $5,000 wrapped into your loan is really, you know, pennies a month, you know, it's, it's not that much a month yeah. that you're adding to your monthly payment. Um, but go ahead, I'll let you, you were going to say something. No, yeah, I mean, that's, we're, we're seeing that as well. Um, you know, and I think that just as kind of like advice or whatever, if you're, you know, looking for a home right now in Texas, um, or really in general, things are pretty busy in most markets. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, we always try if we're working with a buyer and we know it's a multiple offer situation to try to understand exactly what the seller is looking for because it's not always price, right? Like they may be moving to another home, so they need an extra week in the house. They may be, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't know what else, right? But there's there's For definitely sure, other ways. Play a big role, yeah. Yeah, that, that you can what you're offering to the seller make it play a big role as to how you can essentially win the deal. If you're paying for other uh, some of their closing costs, if you're yeah. paying for the title policy, if you're paying for your your own home warranty, whatever it might yeah. be, that's that's kind of getting the seller a little bit more money. Um, and you convey that to the other agent um, yeah. so that they understand, you know, what you're trying to do. Sometimes they don't. The other agent doesn't know what's going on, so it's your. It becomes your job, you know, yeah. to convey that to the other side. So, um, but yeah, it, it's it's been it's been a whirlwind, um, and there will be ebbs and flows. So, in certain housing types, too, aren't going as fast. You know, like a two story home that's huge is not going to move as fast as a single story, you know, for a first time, you know, that first time home buyer yeah. that's lower and usually lower in price. Usually you can, a, a single story home is great for those that are downsizing that need less space. So those are things to consider too. If you're, if you're trying to get into a larger home, even though the market is hot, it's not necessarily going to be as hot as other housing types that are in stronger demand. So like a condo, for example, or a townhome, they may not be as in high demand as your single family. So those are other things to consider when you're looking at affordability and you're also looking at the housing market as a, as a whole, essentially. All right, so let's move on to uh, property taxes, kind of related a little bit to that. Um, so what is your, how are property taxes in Houston? I'll let you start start there. Oh, they, I'm going to add. Yeah, for sure. So property taxes, um, I think probably are pretty similar in Houston as they are to Dallas. Um, so basically, they can be anywhere between I would say a little under 2% of the assessed value of your home up to about 4% of the assessed value of your home. So the way things work in Texas, um, and in Houston is that Basically, first, we're a non-disclosure state, so you don't have to tell the tax authority what you paid for your home. So most people, when they've lived in their home for a while, year over year, they're going to protest their property tax uh, value to try to get it down as low as possible. So if, if uh, the Harris County Appraisal District, or HCAD, tells you that your home is worth 300 k you're going to say, oh, no, because of this, this, and this, it's actually only worth 280 or it's actually it's actually worth less. So we always want to try to keep that value as low as possible as you're living in the home, um, and the tax value isn't since we are a non-disclosure state, it's not like what you would actually sell your home for. Perhaps you could sell your home for 350 or something like that. Um, so again, it's going to be anywhere between two to 4%. 
Um, why it varies is going to be a few different things. There's school taxes in there. There's flood control district district taxes in there. And then the thing in Texas or the thing, at least in Houston, that people don't always uh, uh, know about when they first move here are the MUD taxes. And so the yeah. MUD stands for Municipal Utility District. And basically what that is, is like, we have a lot of new development in, in Texas because it's just, we have so much land, right? Big, mm -hmm. big state. Um, so as a, you know, planned community gets planned, they, you know, need roads, they need sidewalks, they need water service, they need, you know, sewage and all that. So basically all of that kind of gets bundled into a specific cost and then gets taxed back to the residents in a mud tax or the municipal utility district tax. So for the newer communities and the master plan communities, those are normally going to have higher mud taxes than communities that have been around for a while. So if you're looking at like a 70 or 80s built home versus a 2020 built home, the taxes normally are going to be a little bit higher on that brand new home because you have all of these amenities and brand new roads and things like that. Um, and then, as I said, like school taxes are in there um, and um, flood control district, things like that. And um, yeah, so again, two to 4% in Houston is normally, you know, kind mm -hmm. of the, the range. Yeah. Okay. So as far as taxes in Dallas go, I would say that the city of Dallas as a whole probably has the most expensive um, property taxes. And there are certain little suburbs and subsets of the city itself that will be as high as 3%. But I haven't seen really anything too much over 3%, um, including the mud and uh you know, the mud taxes, the PIDs or the PUDs, that's, those are the three. Does it have a mud, a PID or a PUD? Those are the three questions. If you're looking at new construction anywhere in Texas, um, you need to ask the salesperson, is it a mud, a PID or a PUD? Like those are the three things that you need to know. It's going to be either one of the three and they all have a higher tax rate tagged on to what you're already paying. Um, and something else that's important to note in Texas is that we don't we do not have a state income tax, which is why I think our property taxes are pretty high compared to the nation. And so we break it down um, into subsets. So like the the two to four percent that Katie and, you know, and I are talking about, um, that's a combination of the school taxes, your your city taxes and your county taxes. So all of those combined together is going to equal that two to four percent. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at property taxes. Now, Dallas as a city is running right around 2.73%. So if you are in the city of Dallas and in Dallas County, um, you're at you're at 2.73, which is pretty high for the surrounding areas too. I'm in McKinney and we're right around 2.4%, just to kind of give you an idea there. And the county as a whole, so I took all of the property taxes in Dallas County that I was given a list um, and I'll have link in the description so you can take a look at it too. But I took all of that and got the average and it was close to 2.65 for the, for the entire county. Once if you look at the entire county on average, um, if you, so if you're looking in Dallas County, if you're looking in a different county, you may more than likely will have lower property taxes. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, take a look at your property taxes because they are going to be more expensive if you're moving here from out of state, but note that you have 0% for your state income tax. So uh, keep, keep all of that in mind. Anything else that you wanted to um, add Katie to that? Um, yeah. I think one thing too, that people also um, kind of forget about sometimes is the homestead exemption and other exemptions. So um, basically if you purchase a home and you occupy it as of January one, so right now we're in 2020. So if you purchase a home in 2020 and you're living in it on January 1, 2021, um, basically prior to April 30th, April 30th, you can file for your exemption. So it's a homestead exemption if you own, uh, own or occupy your home. Um, there are over 55 exemptions, disabled exemptions, veterans, a lot of different exemptions that you can file that give you a break on your taxes based yes. on, you know, different categories that you may um, qualify for. So normally you can find those at the county mm -hmm. appraisal district's website. So Dallas yeah. County, Harris County. Um, I don't Just really know any other counties in, in your county, area. <laughs> you're looking to do through Google <clears throat> Dallas, you know, whatever county name, appraisal district. <clears throat> and it should take you to the right place if you're yeah. looking for that. Um, Something else that I that you were thinking about, and this is also all, everything that Katie's talking about is in addition to 
you know, you could argue you could fight for lowering your taxes. So in addition to fighting for lowering your taxes, you could get other exemptions as well on top of that to help with the lower tax rate. Um, and that I think that the biggest thing here is that you want to also taxes are, are a huge part of your monthly payment that you're making. So even though you, you see it seems like you could afford a whole lot, sometimes the taxes will it, you know, it may kick you out, especially the mud taxes. If the mud taxes are so much higher, they may kick you out of a certain certain bracket. So keep an eye on the and keep an eye on that type of thing when you're when you're looking into property taxes. All right, the next thing we're going to hit on is actually the weather. So um, I'll go ahead and start for the weather. So here in Dallas, and I get questions about this all the time. Here in Dallas we do see um, pretty severe weather when it comes to tornadoes, um, hail, um, you know, severe thunderstorms will kind of blow through the Dallas Fort Worth area because it is located in Tornado Alley. However, I've lived here my entire life. The weather stations are phenomenal about letting you know, um, you know, if there's a tornado warning in your area, there's usually sirens that are going off. I have it set up to where my phone will go bananas whenever it's, um, you know, you have a tornado warning, uh, it'll just go crazy. Usually, uh, the power stations are good about keeping obviously the electricity on as long as it can get on, can stay on. Now, tornadoes, you have to keep in mind, they are very, very isolated events. So even if a tornado hit the city of Dallas, it's only going to be a teeny tiny section of Dallas that was necessarily hit by the tornado. Um, so keep that in mind. They're usually very, it's very rare for you to be caught in a tornado, so to speak. Um, and in all the years that I've lived here, um, I'm usually able to take cover. And then when I'm, you know, when it, the cover, the safety when they remove or lift the tornado warning, then you can go outside and look and see if there was anything, you know, any damage close to where you were. And there, in, in most cases, there usually isn't. But um, they'll have tornado relief stuff um, that will happen as well. And the, the big one, the, the thing to notice too, is the last uh, big tornado section that blew through Dallas this past spring, um, there were no fatalities, no fatalities. So it's very rare for that type of instance to result in any type of fatality. Um, I will say that sometimes you'll have just be aware of the weather more so in the spring. So when we're changing seasons, usually that's when you see the most severe weather here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, and then just just kind of be aware if you're out and about, if you're driving, I would say hail is a more common event than a tornado. So that's why you see a lot of roofers um, will go door to door because or a new roof that's changed every so many years, maybe every three to five years, you'll get a new roof as a result of the hail that we experience here in Dallas. Um, so your homeowner's insurance is going to be a little bit higher in, than other areas, as well as your car insurance, because they have to ensure that whenever, if your car gets hit by hail and all banged up, that you get, re you know, you get the money to, uh, fix all the damage that the hail did essentially to your vehicle or to your home. Um, so kind of keep those, those things in mind um, when you're thinking about the Dallas area. But right now it's beautiful. It's sunny. There's no severe weather, um, but just kind of keep an eye out for it. The, the weather stations again are super fantastic about letting you know uh, when severe weather hits. And now I'm going to take it over to, Hey, yeah. So as far as weather goes in Houston, um, I think one one of the big things and, and where I would rank Houston over Dallas is that it's less um, severe as far as uh, temperature changes. So I just looked up a stat. So Houston averages only 18 days per year with temperatures of 32 degrees or less. Um, so fewer cold days in Houston than there are in Dallas. Um, and then 99.6 days with high temperatures of 90 degrees or more. So everyone knows that it's hot in Texas in the summer. Houston and Dallas, it's, it's more humid here, but like it's hot as heck in the summertime anywhere you are in Texas. It's, yeah. Don't let anyone in Texas tell you otherwise, but it's hot everywhere in the summer. So I think that like people just need to kind of get over it. Um, <laughs> but just wanted to throw that out there is, you know, yeah. the 18 days per year 
of 32 degrees or less. So really, you know, it doesn't really get cold here. We don't get snow. 14, there's only been 14 snowfalls in Houston since 1939. So like the probability of snow is super low. Um, So yeah, those are, those are a few kind of stats and things. Um, I think as far as Houston goes, a lot of what people hear about is flooding. Um, Houston is, um, you know, prone to flooding. Um, So one of the things that we always advise clients is to get flood insurance. Um, Flood insurance, if you're not in a flood zone or the home is never flooded, runs about 500 bucks a year, um, which is, you know, in my opinion, great protection for you. Um, you know, to ensure that you have additional insurance on top of your homeowner's insurance. Um, and then as, as far as weather goes, I mean, I think, you know, I, I touched on touched on a lot of it. It's hot in the summer, it's humid, but in the winter, um, you know, right now it's a little cool, um, which is, I think, a little, it's a little early to be cool in Houston. I'm trying to look up the weather on my phone right now. <laughs> it's um, moving yeah, very it's, slowly. It's 66 degrees, so it's not that I'm cool. Yo-yo. Just, does, it, does it yo-yo? You said it didn't yo-yo a lot, but I find that a little bit hard to believe because it yo-yos a little bit here. Like um, we were, you know, having 40 degree weather. Um, that was like our low, I think. And I, our high was probably in the 50s. So 50s, 40s, or maybe 60s. And then um, like right around this time of year, and it, it's, it'll yo-yo. So some days it'll get as high as maybe the 80s. Um, and it'll be like, gosh, I, I thought it, we were finished with the heat, you know? Well, um, yeah, I think you've seen those memes too, right? Where it's like, oh, Houston's weather for the week. And it's like, you know, winter, summer, spring, fall. And yeah. like, you know. um, so yeah, I, I mean, it, oh, go ahead. Uh, it definitely does that here as well, you know, but I think that like, as far as um, I think where I was going with my comment was that like, it definitely gets way colder there than it does here. So if you want like, you know, we get a, a little, little bit, bit of testing. We, we don't get, we don't see a whole lot of snow. I mean, last year it snowed once yeah, <laughs> and that was in only certain parts. Like it wasn't yeah. even County that was in McKinney, like in further South, we, I think they got a little bit of snow, but the east side, the west side of town didn't see any snow. Um, we will have ice storms here. So that yeah. is that is kind of a, a big thing. Um, I know Oklahoma right now is experiencing some pretty bad. I have family that live up there that mm-hmm. their power has been out for a week. Now, it's not going to get that bad here as far yeah. as an ice storm. But TxDOT has been doing a, a better job at whenever, you know, we have weather whether it's, you know, severe weather or even ice, they'll put, you know, everything shuts down when it's ice because they know that it's more of a dangerous situation for, for those Texas drivers um, that aren't used to driving on that type of, you know, terrain, so to speak. But I want to ask a little bit about hurricanes because I know Harvey hit um, several years ago and it really um, affected the, the, you know, the downtown Houston area, as well as areas around Houston. And I wanted to get some perspective on that. Um, And as far as hurricanes, how frequent have you seen that type of weather situation? Um, Because that would be probably my bigger concern, you know, aside from the flooding too, for sure. Um, And I know parts of Louisiana are below sea level. So they're already at a disadvantage whenever you have any type of hurricane, but tell us a little split about like the sea level hurricanes and I'll let you kind of take it away from. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as hurricanes go and as far as flooding goes, I mean, we're definitely a city that's prone to flooding. Um, You know, I've lived here, as I said, for about 10 years, I've lived here since 2011 and we've had probably four or five different events um, in that time. So, um, you know, I think that the, the first thing, as I said before, is to always get flood insurance in Houston, um, just because areas that, that there are areas that are more pl- prone to flooding than others. But then, you know, sometimes there will just be heavy rain. And that was kind of what happened with Harvey was that we had 55 inches of rain in such a short period of time. That there's like really nowhere for that water to go. Right. So, um, you know, that was something that had a lot more significant of an impact than just like a normal rain. Yeah. So I think some of the things that Houston has done um, and the way that Houston is designed is that like, yeah, there are some parts that are below sea level. We're called the Bayou City. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, the highways are designed to hold water. So like the photos that you always see of people like driving their cars into basically water, um, which don't do that. 
yeah, so the photos you see of people driving their cars into water or whatever, but basically the, the highways have overpasses and then a lot of them dip down. So um, at the time of Harvey, I actually lived basically in downtown Houston, east downtown Houston, and we live, you know, probably not even a half mile, a tenth of a mile from the highway. We, we walked over there once the rain kind of stopped and like the highway was completely filled up with water, you know, so it's designed to retain water and to take water from the streets and things like that. Um, we have bayous. Um, so we have basically uh, very large, um, basically dishes that, that hold water and will carry water out to, you know, the, the rivers and the, you know, bigger bodies of water that move it faster. Um, and so since Harvey, um, you know, they've put a lot of money into flood control and into uh, dredging out those bayous so that they're deeper and can retain more water. Um, and the city has also put a lot of regulations and um, things like that onto builders. So what was happening is, you know, similar to Dallas, right, we have all of this land you know, previously when it would rain, that land would just hold water, right? But then as you put more structures and more homes and more streets onto to vacant land that used to be vacant, like where is that water going to go? So um, mm -hmm. a lot of new developments are required to put in like retention and detention ponds and, and things to hold water. Um, the the um, drainage that's now required for specific houses is so much more significant. Like I'm talking to builders, um, especially in town, but also in the burbs, like they have to put in way more drainage per home than they did before. So the city's really trying to, um, you know, mitigate that moving forward and ensure that they're doing the right things now, as opposed to being like, oh man, all of these homes flooded. Now what do we do? So they're trying to like, you know, mitigate that through the bayous and through you know flood control but then also like okay as we build more homes like how can we do it yeah. smarter basically so um, like so. focusing on the drainage essentially in certain areas especially new builds like new new construction area how can we get the water to drain if we you know flood it or if it's flooded um yeah right, drain better because I mean, we are we are, we're not like that close to the coast. I mean, Galveston is like a forty-five minute to an hour drive away from like downtown okay. Houston proper. So it's not like we're on the coast, but we are pretty close to it, right? As as yeah. you know, different um, storms come up out of the Gulf, like we're going to get rain, mm -hmm. um, and that's you know, Hurricane Harvey was obviously in twenty seventeen, but in fifteen and sixteen we had like Memorial and Tax Day floods. That was basically just a lot of rain, you know, and it wasn't any sort of. Uh, flood or any sort of like event that caused it. It was just a lot of rain. Um, hmm. You know, we've had other other storms and things like that since. But I mean, Harvey is obviously what you know people um, you know know about and hear about. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I tell every single one of my clients that they should get flood insurance. Um, yeah. we, we carry flood insurance and have on on all of the homes we've owned, despite living in areas that aren't known for flooding because it yeah. is 500 bucks a year and just having that additional protection on top of our homeowners insurance is, like you know, $500 for flood protection. That's, that's nothing. I mean, I think in other areas, I want to say it's exponentially greater um, parts of Florida, part, other parts that are closer to the coast. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure that their mm -hmm. flood insurance is ridiculous, um, but they are a little bit more prone than, than kind of in the Gulf, but still um, I think that $500 is, is, uh, that would be a lifesaver if I moving to Houston. So, yeah, I mean, it, it can obviously be more expensive if a home is flooded before, if it's in a flood okay. plain or something like that. But like just for standard coverage, I mean, it's it's okay. uh, yeah, it makes sense to do. Cool. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, the job market. Um, so people moving to the area, um, and and I'll go ahead and start talking about the unemployment rate. So right now. Um, as of July 2020, um, I was looking at an article and it said that the unemployment rate in the United States was right around 10.2%. Um, and I'll have a link in the description below to so you can ref see that article and, and read a little bit more about it. Now, as far as um, that was as of July, and I think there was another one that I saw that was right around the next September. Oh, goodness. The, oh, in Texas. Okay, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong data. This is live. Sorry. All right. So in Texas, um, the unemployment rate as, as of September 2020 
um, was 6.8%. So Texas as a whole has a um, lower unemployment rate compared to the rest of the nation, uh, which is the economy in Texas has always been a little bit better than um, the nation in general um, when you're kind of comparing apples to oranges that way. Um, but I would say that uh, in Dallas specifically, September 2020, um, the unemployment rate was right around seven and a half percent, which is a little bit higher than Texas as a whole. And I would say that probably certain areas like Austin and Houston, you know, other metro areas are going to kind of offset that and lower it as a percentage and as an average. Um, but the Dallas was still lower than the national average, which was right around seven and a half percent. Um, and I would say that as far as job opportunities, uh, Dallas has been a very big tech hub. Um, we have, uh, companies like McAfee, um, Alchemy. I know that uh, those, just to name a couple of the tech businesses, uh, here in the North Plano area, um, several, uh, corporations and stuff headquarter in downtown still. And then, uh, I know that the PGA has recently said that they're going to be moving parts of their headquarters um, or maybe their entire headquarters. I need to double check the article, but I'll have a link to that article about um, the PGA headquarter uh, information that I found. But they're actually moving part of it to Frisco, um, which is right next to McKinney, uh, where I'm from. And um, so there's going to be a lot of uh, growth as a result of that. And I feel like every it seems like every so often we'll add another big thing. I know, uh, is it Charles E. Swab? They they just recently moved their headquarters here to the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, so there's still lots of growth and lots of opportunity for jobs um, here in area here in our area in Dallas. Um, Katie, what are you seeing um, as far as Houston, uh, the job market there? Yeah. So one of the things that I just kind of looked up was Houston unemployment. So right now we're sitting at about 8.3% unemployment. Um, it looks like last month it was 9.8. Obviously, you know, I think these numbers are a little um, higher than usual as we're kind of seeing nationwide because of COVID and everything that's going on as far as unemployment. Um, unemployment last year in 2019 was 4%. And then the long-term average of unemployment in Houston is 6.27%. So just to give you a little bit of idea of kind of how things are in a normal job market, um, obviously 8.3 is a little bit higher than usual, um, you know, than um, than usual just for, for Houston and for Texas in general, um, just kind of as things go. Um, I think that, um, you know, as far as employment goes, when people think of Houston, generally, they, they think of energy and oil and gas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is a large portion. And I didn't look up, I, I should have looked up like percentages for how much that is. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, some of the things to keep in mind is that like, Houston, um, although oil and gas is a large part of our economy, we also have the largest medical center in the world. Mm. in Houston. Okay. Um, but, you know, so we have a lot of medical, right? So we've got, you know, the Texas Medical Center has MD Anderson, Memorial Hermann, mm -hmm. Methodist, and, yeah. you know, tons of offshoots from there, right? Those are just kind of the big name hospitals, but there's tons of hospitals, there's tons of different research, uh, you know, schools, laboratories, things like that there. Um, another large employer here is AGB. Um, and, um, you know, the different grocery stores and things like that, you know, Walmarts and, and whatnot. Um, oil and gas, obviously, so you've got like Exxon, Shell, Schlumberger, you know, all of those. Um, so we're seeing a lot of different things. And then even to the east of Houston, we have the port. So we have a lot of like import export and things like that. We have plants um, and, and, um, and other things as well. So, you know, we're definitely seeing a lot more um, diverse of a job market than just oil and gas. It's not like just engineers moving here. Um, I would say that's a far different, um, you know, kind of look than things were definitely in like the seventies or eighties, but like, yeah. especially in the early two thousands and, and, and things like that. Um, when I moved here in 2010, 2011, I was actually in the apartment industry and like every single person that moved here was like, or like applied for an apartment at our community was like oil and gas. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I would assume that if I worked there now, I would see, you know, a lot more uh, varied of, of uh, yeah. occupations. Yeah. 
No, uh, Dallas does have um, UT Southwestern. So that's one of the big research hospitals here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And we do have a lot of hospitals and medical jobs. We have an entire medical district um, here in Dallas. Um, so healthcare um, and hospitals and that type of occupation, there, there are a lot. And I would say that every suburban city has at least one major one, if not, you know, several of, you know, urgent cares and, and some, those yeah. kind of things. Um, but I will say that I did read an article um, about Forbes and they were actually saying that Houston, Sugarland and Baytown were ranked number three as far as best places for jobs. So I'll get, I guess I'll give where was you Dallas, where was Dallas ranked on that list? Dallas was number five. So we weren't too far behind. OK, but we were three. Um, gotcha. Okay. But you were three. Yeah. Austin was number one, obviously. Um, but but they're having all kinds of issues. So we're not going to talk about Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Jeremy Knight. No one wants to do Austin. That's right. Um, but uh, so that was kind of interesting that I, I did. See, and I, I, that makes a, more sense, too, just because um, Houston's a lot bigger metro area than Dallas. So that did make a little bit more sense. And I, I think Austin is probably I'd have to look at the population stats to be sure. But I think. But there, but also too, and this is something you didn't talk about. Um, NASA is not that far away. Houston, we have a problem. I mean, we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, we got the space center. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Museums and and that type of thing over there, uh, which kind of segues into the next thing that I would love for us to talk about, which are going to be the family activities um, or you know, just things that you can do, touristy type things if you're visiting either Houston or Dallas. Um, the, these are some great things for you to do. So Katie, do you have your list ready or do you need me to go first? I'm, I'm ready. You, it's you're ready? To you. you're ready for yeah. So as far as in Houston, there is a ton to do. Um, there's a lot to do in Houston proper. So as I said before, you've got like the 610 loop, which is, you know, the, the, the city of Houston. Um, so as far as sports go, we have all the major sports teams. We've got an MLB, you know, the Astros, Go Stros, Dynamo and Dash. So the um, women's and men's professional soccer teams. We have the Houston Rockets, the Texans. And again, all of those stadiums are near downtown. So um, you, if you come to Houston and you're staying like for to visit, right, you can stay downtown and, and take an Uber or ride the Metro Rail to all of those places. Um, we've got an aquarium downtown. We have the Houston Zoo. Uh, the museum district, which has like 15 plus museums. Um, a lot of them have free days, right? So for those that do charge admission, they may have free days. So definitely check out the website. Um, there's also a Houston city pass that you can buy that gives you admission to a lot of different things um, or discounted admission to a lot of different places. Um, as far as parks, we have a ton of parks downtown or, or like in the city, we've got Herman Park, uh, Discovery Green Memorial Park, Eleanor Tinsley. And again, all of those are within like kind of the downtown city proper uh, area. Um, and then if you're looking further out, um, further from, you know, Houston proper, we've got the Space Center and NASA down south. We've got the Kima Boardwalk. We have Galveston and there's a pier down at Galveston that you can like walk around and, and you know, eat and drink and, um, you know, kind of uh, walk around all that. Um and then we've got, um, as far as like cultural things to do, we've got Chinatown, which is in Southwest Houston. But then if you drive out further west to Katy, there's a, a Katy Chinatown. So Katy's a suburb of Houston out west, about 30 to 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how far into Katy you go. But Chinatown's out there um, and it's just packed with different eateries and tea shops and boba shops and just like a ton to do. So um I would say that's probably a small um, sampling of things that you can do. Um, yeah. I'm really just focusing on like Houston proper, right? Yeah. Like in the city center. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's parks and things to do um, out in Sugarland. We have a huge um, I think It's called like the smart financial center. Whoever's, you know, has naming rights of it right now, but it's basically a big, um, you know, venue where there's concerts and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so Dallas wise, uh, we have quite a bit here in the Dallas Fort Worth metro area, but I'm going to focus mainly on Dallas. Like Katie said, we could go, we could talk probably for another whole hour just about activities and things to do here in the area. But um, I will say, like in downtown specifically, um, and I'm going to kind of share my screen here. Let's see if I can 
add that to the all right so in downtown uh we actually have a farmer's market now this is not a traditional farmer's market um it's so it's got a lot of the produce and stuff that you're going to see here but they've also expanded it to where you have artisans and um and other things uh like there's a lot of things to do in Clyde Warren Park that's downtown. Um, the sixth floor museum is actually um, a historical place that you can go. Um, and it's actually um, talk, talking about, oh goodness, it, that popped up on me. Uh, so it, it kind of talks about the assassination of JFK a little bit, his life, his legacy. And then also it kind of, uh, the museum itself is actually um, where there's the museum right here, so you can kind of see. Well, I thought it would have pictures. Well, that's kind of a bummer. All right, so I'll go back to the main. Can I go back to the main? Okay. All right. Um, so that's really cool. It, so it, it's the documentary of JFK. It also kind of, the museum itself is actually the the, the store where he was assassinated, or the store. It was, it was a warehouse, excuse me. So this was the warehouse that he was, um, assassinated so to speak so you can actually go and it shows i think the firearm that they have i'm sorry i'm trying to play with my windows here this is not working too well okay so i can kind of see what i'm sharing a little bit better okay so uh and then you can you can kind of they have like a miniature model of uh you know, where the gunman was and everything. Um, so it kind of talks about that piece of it, which is pretty interesting. And it's also historic. It, it's, it has the biggest collection of historical artifacts from that type of event, because what happened after the assassination was that people were so intrigued and interested about, about it. They actually went and they were lining up trying to visit like where it was and trying to find it um that kind of thing um, we also have the holocaust museum um that is a neat thing to go to with family the dallas world aquarium is almost like its own zoo to a certain per, certain right so to speak um, they have uh, one of the tanks that if you were to look up you would be able to see some of the fish it's kind of like an archway so you can see some of the fish and the sharks and everything kind of swimming like around you which is kind of a neat feature but the aquarium itself is not just fish it has you know different types of animals that you can go and take a look at lots of birds lots of um, uh, Look, it says storks, Madagascar giant day gecko. So they have a lot of different animals, not just fish um, at the aquarium. Um, Reunion Tower is also a huge draw to the area. There's a restaurant at the very top that actually rotates around the little ball area that you can go to um, on a special date night or anniversary. Um, and you can actually go take a tour. Um, the tour does cost money now, unfortunately, but you can go up and you can look and observe on the, they call it the geo deck there. Um, there are tons of hotels and events um, there in downtown itself. Uh, here's just a couple of the restaurants. You've got Americano, Bread Zeppelin, Cafe Ismar, Cafe Monument, uh, Campisi's, uh, let's see, Crafty Irishman. I mean, there's just tons. And this is just one part of Dallas, um, not to mention like the West End has its own thing. Deep Ellum has its own thing kind of going on. Um, the Jewel, which is uh, a very popular, you know, luxurious hotel that they have. They have this pool to where you can, it looks like you can look over the, the tower, tower there, which is pretty neat. Clyde Warren Park, um, it used to be, um, they took the highway and it used to be a sunken highway and they actually built the park over the highway. Um, and they're actually thinking about expanding that too now. So that's, something that you would want to go see. There are a lot of food trucks in that area, several playgrounds that are closed now because of what's going on. Um, but there's still events and activities. They have a trolley. We have a train that you can take 
um, from Grapevine, which is kind of in the middle of Dallas Fort Worth. And you can take the train all the way to the Fort Worth stock stockyards um, if you wanted to get over there. And there's some a lot of cute little historic downtown areas. You've got one in Grapevine. You've got one in Flower Mound. You've got one in Plano. You've got one in McKinney, which is probably one of the most popular historic downtown areas. Um, you've got, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, sporting wise, uh, we have, we can compete with Houston on this because we do have a professional um, football team and the Dallas Cowboys. They have a training facility and, and they headquarter out of Frisco. And um, it's a very cool, they have their practice, they have a practice field inside and then they have like another green space outside that has a big jumbotron to where you can watch the games actually on this little um, another, some more turf that's out there. You could bring lawn chairs, lots of great restaurants around that area. Um, you can, uh, and then in downtown, the stars and the Dallas Mavericks share the American Airlines center. Um, they can actually change the basketball court into an ice skating rink, um, which I think Houston has probably something similar to that, um, for that particular facility. Um, and you see a lot of, there's a lot of, of concerts and events that happened in the AA Center. Um, and also a lot of like ice skating, uh, like Disney on Ice will usually have something going on uh, at the AA Center from time to time. Um, a lot of the Harlem Globetrotters will, will be performing in the AA Center. Um, and then you have, uh, you have, we have two zoos. We have the Dallas Zoo and the Fort Worth Zoo. So you have the benefit of going to either one if you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, every year, the biggest fair in Texas is held in Dallas called the State Fair of Texas. That's where it lives. Um, and the fairgrounds that we have there um, will house that particular event. Um, and it's unfortunately it was canceled this year, but hopefully next year it'll you know be bigger and brighter and more beautiful than ever. It's one of my favorite things to do here in Dallas is, is to go to the State Fair. And then we have the Dallas Arboretum, a beautiful, I don't know how many acres exactly, but several, several acres of beautiful gardens and green spaces in the Dallas Arboretum. So you want to check that one out if you're ever here in Dallas. Um, the Gaylord Texan, which is up in Grapevine, um, that's where they have, house a lot of these, um, they'll have these very fantastical ice sculptures where you can go and tour and visit all these, like I think one of the years they, the theme was, uh, oh gosh, Charlie Brown was the theme. And you could walk through and you could see different ice sculptures and scenes from the Charlie Brown comics. And they usually have like an ice slide and they keep it really cold, obviously. So you're wearing like this huge parka and a hat and everything. But the Gaylord Texan is, a, is another great place for you to go for date nights as well. They have a hotel that has um, like an inner atrium that has all this beautiful gardening and landscaping and little lake that kind of circles this middle island around it. It's, it's a very big um, to do. A lot of conventions as well are held at the Gaylord Texan. And then we have, uh, let's see, there are five plus lakes around the Dallas Fort Worth area. You have the White Rock Lake, which is close to the Dallas Arboretum, uh, Lake Louisville, Lake Gray Hubbard, Lake Levon, Lake Grapevine. So lots of boating and fishing opportunities there. And then uh, as far as community and events and activities, every little city is going to have its own um, Christmas tree lighting. They're going to have their own pumpkin patch. So there's multiple opportunities. If, even if you don't live in a particular suburb or, suburb or city that you can take part in and, and be a part of that particular culture. So I don't know, Katie, uh, I think Dallas won on the activities uh, side of things. I mean, <laughs> if you would like me to go into more activities, no, I can, no, no, but, no. you know, <laughs> No, but uh, I think there's there's plenty of things to do in, in either city, um, if, especially if you're considering and comparing both cities. Um, so I guess I think we're going to kind of wrap it up from here. We're <clears throat> already at a, just over an hour. And uh, any other any other final thoughts from you, Katie? What do you think that Dallas do you think Dallas won or Houston? I don't know. 
I mean, I'm always going to choose Houston over Dallas, but I know people move to both cities. So, you know, my, I, my uh, can't handle Houston. I can't <laughs> go. My hair is too, it, it, it'll, it'll just get larger if I move to Houston. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I went to school at Texas A&M. And so I totally understand the humidity and being there in the summertime. It was just, for me, it was miserable. Um, and in Dallas, you get more of a dry, a dry heat. So it's a little bit like it's hot in the room right now that I'm in, but it's manageable because it's not like, you know, I'm not sweating over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, well, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you you being on here today and letting people know about Houston and all the opportunities that are there. Um, and we want to invite uh, those of you that are watching and those of you that are maybe watching after the live stream, who won? Was it Dallas? Was it Houston? Uh, put that in the comments below so we know, uh, you know, who really won this, this, this battle, this, uh, we weren't really jabbing at each other too much. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, and I think we have, there has to be like a little like caveat asterisk there. Like your channel is obviously a channel based around Dallas Fort Worth, you know, and people moving there. So, you know, I, I do see one comment already that he prefers Dallas by a country yard. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I appreciate the comment, but you know, I mean, it just, it is a, it is a Dallas channel. So that's just, just, Throwing it out there, it's just letting everyone know. On a Dallas channel, that's that's true. So there's a little bit of bias there. I can see that. So next time you need to have me on your channel, and then we'll yeah. see. We'll see, see who wins. Go there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, like I said, thanks again so much. I appreciate you coming on and sharing all that information. I think it'll really help people that are considering both areas. Um, and then uh, I'll be watching the comments. So if you have a question for either Katie or I, um, I'll be watching even after the stream. So that way, if um, you have a question specifically about Houston, I can, you know, we can talk to Katie and, and we can get you the answer to that question. So, uh, well, I, I think that's it. We, we hope that you have a great rest of your Halloween day <laughs> and we will see you on the next video, possibly. So bye. See ya. See you later.